This looks like a bunch of exercise. <sighs> Here we are back at Obachi State Park, 30 miles south of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Good Lord, when does it stop? One of 13 towers that still exist in the state of Indiana, so let's conquer tower number one. Turn it around. Silver Steeler here. And winning image photography. Well, that was a little bit over dramatic, wasn't it? You think? I think that's how we roll sometimes, a little bit over the top and the corny <laughs> selves that we are. But let's get right into this gold coin since I made you endure the three minute struggle up the fire tower. I went to my LCS, like I do a lot. And he pulled out this $5 gold coin and basically sold it to me just a little bit over melt. So this is the 1879 San Francisco $5 gold Liberty head coin, also known as a pre-1933 gold. Our first. Yeah. 1933, pre-1933 gold. 1879 Liberty Head $5 Half Eagle Gold Coins were produced in three mints, Philadelphia, Carson City, and San Francisco. While production of the Half Eagle began soaring in the late 1870s, mintages for this coin would enter the millions beginning in the 1880s. The Carson City Mint continued a relatively anemic output of these coins. Today, the 1879 CC Half Eagles are considered the scarcest business strike $5 gold coins for that year. Unfortunately, I don't have an 1879 CC. I have an 1879S, which has a mintage of 426,200. The 1879 Half Eagles are among the most common $5 gold coins up to that point in history. Still, collectors and bullion investors alike will notice that the values of the 1879 Half Eagles are much higher than the spot price for the intrinsic gold content, which comes to 0.241 ounces of pure gold per coin. 
This is due to the fact that the 1879 half eagles are still considered relatively scarce and exist in much lower numbers than I mentioned earlier. The 1879 Liberty Head Half Eagle was designed by Christian Gobrecht, the third chief engraver of the United States Mint. He is perhaps most closely associated in general numismatic circles with designing the seated Liberty coinage of the 19th century, like the trade dollar. This will make a nice addition to the stack winning. Yeah, I really like it. Let's talk about these fire towers in this state. The state of Indiana began to build fire outlook towers in 1930. However, the state of Indiana faced a problem. Its land had not been completely mapped. This made it especially difficult to uncover the highest elevation points at which to place the towers. Luckily, the state overcame this issue and 33 towers were in full operation by 1952. The Indiana fire towers were designed so that the watchmen could see every possible vantage point of the forest to detect wildfires. Although mostly defunct of their original purpose now, some are still standing and provide awesome views. This fire tower soars over the Abachi State Park at just around 100 feet. Repairs were made in the spring of 2018 to restore the tower to like new condition. Incredibly, the $75,000 renovation cost was completely funded by volunteers in nine months. Now, before we bring this video to a close, we have one more major piece of news we'd like to tell you. Well, at least it's news to us. We just purchased- A drone. A little excited about the drone, are we? Yeah, yeah. We just purchased a DJI Havoc 2 Pro. With a Hasselblad camera. We just ordered it, so it hasn't even come in yet. So we're really looking forward to getting this in and looking forward to see how we can incorporate some of these drone shots into our videos. Yeah, I wanna to go to the waterfalls. Waterfalls big time would be cool. I mean, literally, this is so state of the art. You let go of the joystick and this thing just hovers right in one spot. Yeah, and it has this uh, hovers feature and you can take a, a time lapse and you can take a long exposure for waterfalls. It has tripod settings on it. I mean, you name it. Spend a little bit of money on this one, but we're really hoping that some of these fire towers can be viewed better. We do know that state parks in here state that you can't bring drones in, but we don't feel that it hurts to at least ask the gate guy, hey, can I be in a central part of the park, fly it straight up, just do a 360 view of the park and see if they say no. I mean, that's the worst thing they can do is say no. Well, we figure we'll get a few people that might say yes. Either way, we're gonna find other places to definitely take this drone to incorporate in our videos because she's a photographer. I like video and this sort of gets them both in there. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed some of the pictures that Winning has been showing you of the fire tower and we will see you at the next state park next week. Remember to like, subscribe, and all those other good things. We'll see you on the next video. Bye, everyone.